In this video, we look at the performance of com performance comparison between digital modulation techniques. We'll start with with the performance in additive wide Gaussian noise channels, and in coming videos, we'll look at the performance of, under wireless fading channels. That would be that would serve as a good start. The material in this uh, video is from popular textbooks, communication textbooks like Haken and then Gray Goldsmith. Haken is the communication systems, and specifically for wireless communications, you can visit Andrea Goldsmith. If you want more resources about the video, please visit my website, search for Mugable at uh, Google for Mugable, and you'll find uh, the course website, or you can read the description. Uh, a summary of bit error rate for, for different digital modulation schemes over additive wide Gaussian noise channel. Okay, what you see on the left here is um, in the x-axis, we have the probability of error. And that's uh, like 10 to the power minus 1, 10 to the power minus 2, and so on. This is why I'm taking the log to avoid writing tens. And in the right, uh, in, in the x axis, we have the energy EB over N0. That's the signal to noise ratio, EB, or related to signal to noise ratio, EB over N0. The energy in the bit divided by the, the noise spectral density. So signal to noise. And that's in the dB. So if you go to the right, you expect the signal quality to improve and the error to decrease, as we can see. Those are having waterfall-like shapes. And that's expected for additive wide Gaussian noise channel. The beauty about this, about this figure, it shows you the performance of different modulation techniques. We have binary PSK, that's the best, QBSK, we have 8 PSK, 16, 32, and then we have also QAM, Okay, and then we have also other techniques that like uh, 16 QM, some of them might be overlapping. Uh, and they are not maybe very distinct, uh, it's not easy to distinguish here. But uh, keep in your mind that we are only showing here the performance in terms of probability of error. However, in terms of power spectral efficiency, of course, they are not the same. Some of them are, are transmitting much, much more data. So keep that in your mind. But this is very important because sometimes we are limited in bandwidth, sometimes we are limited in quality. So we need to find out what is the best, uh, what is the best modulation technique. The figure on the right hand side here shows you the performance figures. We have seen some of these before. So we have coherent binary PSK or coherent QPSK or coherent MSK. They are all having similar performance. For the case of coherent binary FSK, the frequency of decaying, we have we have seen that we need double the amount of energy to get the same performance. And for the case of DPSK, differential phase shift keying, we have uh, an exponential relation for the performance. That we, here we have the error function complementary. The non-coherent binary FSK, we have also the performance is less than that. So you can see here that uh, in terms of probability of error. PSK or QPSK are the same, but others are not the same. So uh, keep in your mind when choosing what modulation technique to, to, to do, to look at the performance as well as other criteria like uh, the power spectral efficiency. Now for the bit error rate comparison, let's look at these curves again here. Um, we'll, we'll try to draw some conclusions. We have non-coherent binary FSK, coherent binary FSK, DBSK, and we know that the worst probability of error would be 0.5. So all of these curves at very low signal to noise ratio should terminate at 0.5 because that's the worst probability of error. It's not zero because, or it's not one, because we can flip all the bits. If the probability of error is one, then it means that's the best you can have because we know that everything is just flipped. So let's trace here some of my comments, our ability to read the curve. Usually, of course, we expect that the coherent modulation techniques to be much better than the non-coherent ones. And you need to note at where we have crossing because th these points represent where one technique surpasses the other one or become better. So if you are to the left of this, at, at low signal to noise ratio, you have one modulation technique better than the other. Anyhow, this region is just very bad because uh, we're very close to 0.5. Most of the wireless communication system will operate at 10 raised to the minus 3 or better probative error. So the bit error rate decreases monotonically as, as, uh, monotonically as uh, EB over N0 increases. We have a waterfall curve. That makes sense. As you increase the signal-to-noise ratio, you expect the performance to, to, to change. 
Coherent binary phase shift keying, QBSK, MSK result in less bitter error rate than others. All of these three have the same performance. Coherent binary phase shift keying and DBSK requires less signal to noise ratio by about 3 dB uh, compared with coherent binary phase shift keying. Okay, so if you look at this distance, approximately, I'm cutting things here for, for you to make things easy. So the difference here is about 3 dB. Of course, it might be different at different levels, but that's the amount of range. You need almost uh, double the amount of energy. So, of course, PPSK requires less or half, while FSK requires double. At high signal-to-noise ratio, non-coherent binary FSK performs approaches coherent PSK. So these two, non-coherent coherent, they get close to each other as you get high signal-to-noise ratio. Okay. Similarly, the case for DBSK and coherent PBSK. Things as you increase signal to noise ratio, some of the advantages, some curves get close to each other. So the the, the advantage of one technique over the other become less uh, dominant. MSK makes decisions based on observation over two TB. So which has which means it has memory. MSK we said we have gradual change on on the phase. So uh, keep that in your in your mind. Now, the bandwidth efficiency, of course, one of the important factor when you look at at uh, comparing different techniques. A summary of power power bandwidth requirements of uh, for MAD PSK. We will fix here the probability of error to be 10 to 1 minus 4. And we're just looking at MAD PSK at different uh, different values. And we see here that as we increase M, uh, the bandwidth efficiency, the bandwidth for MAD compared with the bandwidth of, of binary, of course, it reduces because the requirement of bandwidth. Um, sorry, here we have the bandwidth requirement for MRE is becoming less compared with the binary because PBSK is, is bandwidth efficient. As you increase M, you get more efficiency. Uh, and if you look at the energy requirement, of course, if you send more symbols, then you need to be more careful and the bandwidth requirement become higher. So for the same data rate, QPSK is widely used in practice. It gives a best trade-off between power and bandwidth. So QPSK is one of the best. Note that here we are trading, we are showing you the bandwidth and we are showing um, the average power and we are fixing the rate. Of course, once you change the rate, the bandwidth requirement will be different. So all these are assuming the same data rate bits per second. Now we can conclude with the following slide, uh, just to recall quickly about the uh, PSK, which is binary modulation. Bandwidth efficient MRE modulation techniques include um, MPSK and MQAM have similar spectral and bandwidth characteristics. So this is the QAM and this is the PSK scenario. For M greater than 4, MSK is circular, for MQAM is, is a rectangular. The distance between the point is smaller in MPSK than Q, MQAM. So here, it's true that you are just looking at the phase, but as you increase the number of points, you have more energy because you have to spread on, around the circle, while these points will require less energy. Of course, the decision regions will here, we can have rectangles here, while we will have uh, sectors here. So this is just a quick review of uh, the different modulation techniques and how they perform under additive white Gauss and noise channels, and uh, with some comparison. So uh, we'll see in coming videos which um, which of, of the techniques will perform well in wireless communication? For now, do a quick search, do a quick search about which modulation techniques are, are preferred in wireless and write your answer in the comment section. Which one are we using in mobile systems? We mentioned MSK. What other modulation techniques are used in uh, wireless or mobile communication systems? So find out and share your answers in the comment section. We'll see you then.